Schoenberg in 1913 is commissioned to by a by a woman who uh, is she's rich. Uh, that's why she can commission things. Who is renowned for her melodrama, and this was actually a 19th century tradition of reciting poetry over music. And she selected the text. This is uh, uh, some poems by a French poet named Albert Giraud. Pierrot Lunaire. Pierrot is a character from the Commedia dell'arte of Italian tradition. He's a clown. Uh, and this is Pierrot Lunaire, moonstruck Pierrot, mad uh, Pierrot. Schoenberg uh, has a translation of these poems uh, into German, and he selects 21 of them. He bills it as thrice seven poems. And he is very much into numerology. Three, the, nu the, uh, the, 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 the number of the Trinity. Seven, the lucky number, which actually uh, breaks down to three, the Trinity, and four for the imperfection of humanity. And then, of course, 13, the unlucky number. And each, and Giraud must have been a little bit superstitious, too, because each of these poems is a rondo, which is uh, a rondo type. But it goes like this line one and two, call it A, are repeated as line seven and eight, and then line one is repeated one more time as line 13. Intervening, the other lines are kind of a B, and then that return, and then coming back. And here are some of the settings just very briefly, as found in all I could find on YouTube with my favorite reciter of Pirolinaire in English, and this would be the jazz singer Cleo Lane. We're going to hear a little bit of the opening, Moon Drunk, the wine which through the eyes we drink flows nightly from the moon in torrents, the poet drinking and reeling. Uh, in ecstasy. And then a little bit of the dandy, the taciturn dandy from Bergamo. Ah, the bald pate, Cassander. And in this, Perrault takes a cranium driller ah, and puts it in his head and then smokes Turkish tobacco out of uh, the pipe stem. Yeah. And a number of the poems are along these lines. Very uh, expressionistic as the uh, artistic trend went in uh, the visual arts and in literature and uh, music at the time. So we're in weird land, there's no question about that. But let us also talk about the instrumentation. It's a mini uh, orchestra, a chamber ensemble of flute, soprano, uh, alto line from uh, the clarinet, and the clarinet also doubles on bass clarinet, so that's kind of a bass line in the winds, and the flute doubles on piccolo. Meanwhile, there are some strings, and we have a violinist doubling on viola, and a cellist. And then, to fill in the gaps, there's a piano. This ensemble, coming down to us as the Perot Ensemble, has been oft used in the 20th century as one of two uh, recurring uh, new music ensembles. The wine which through the eyes we drink Flows nightly from the moon in Taurus, and as a spring tide overflows the far and distant land. A phantasmagorial light ray illumines tonight on the crest. Line flasks of the holy sacred ebony washstand of the taciturn dandy from Bergamo. Where the cranium driller. He then presses with his finger red tobacco groaning turkey. Well, Schoenberg found he had a couple of problems with this expressionistic, atonal style. Turned out he was only able to really write small pieces, as you heard in the five pieces for orchestra, and the six little piano pieces. And the only time the pieces are even long, and they're not in Perot Lunaire, but he did, uh, they are in uh, Die Glückliche Hande, and also Erwartung, a one-woman opera where a woman's waiting for her lover, and turns out he 
he's been dead the whole time, and maybe she in madness had killed him, and she doesn't remember it, and yada, yada. But uh, unless he had a long text, he was just out of luck. So he stops writing music for a while and doesn't come back until he has some new approach. And his new approach he calls a method of writing with all 12 tones related only to each other. And this comes down to us as the 12-tone school of music. And the idea is you take a chromatic scale, and we're going to do one, and I recommend that you, uh, you know, just take the 12 pitches of a chromatic scale. And notice we're not going to resolve that. And you just mix them up in a new order. Maybe something like this. Sometimes the traditional intervals uh, composers will try to avoid in 12-tone writing. But you basically, that will be the source of all your musical material. That 12-tone row will be your palette, shall we say. There are four, uh, three other operations that are done besides the prime version. You can invert the row, which is whatever I did backwards. And I can't remember what I did. I'll take a look after this. Then you can also take that series of pitches and put them upside down. And you can also take the upside down version and run it backwards. And these would be the uh, in order, the retrograde, the inversion, and the retrograde inversion. Since the starting pitch was actually totally arbitrary, and I think I may have started from there, you can actually start that pattern of intervals on any of the 12 pitches. So you have four operations, the prime is the original, by the way, and then 12 possible starting points, and that is known as the 48 pair of permutations of a 12-tone row. And we're going to hear one, and you might notice I've been doing a lot of atonal Schoenberg, and I'm only going to do one 12-tone. His 12-tone pieces are wonderful, but, you know, Maybe there's something about coming up with rules that maybe does constrict things. But this is a very powerful piece. Schoenberg, like so many of the Europeans at this time, uh, is an expatriate by the end of his life. He comes to America. He is Jewish, so this is a good reason to get out of the old country. Uh, and he, he settles in Hollywood, as I think we mentioned, right? strictly speaking, Brentwood. And he gets uh, a text from someone who had survived the Warsaw Ghetto, the concentration camp. And what you'll hear in this excerpt is, once again, uh, that only semi-pitch, which, by the way, is all meticulously written out uh, in Perillionaire. Matter of fact, uh, if you were to actually sing the pitches, it would be something like, the wine which through the eyes we drink, but instead the wine which through the eyes we drink, because you initially uh, uh, touch the note and then go up or down, glissando to the next note, and he called that Sprechstimme. So uh, you'll hear that, actually, uh, in... Uh, Survivor from Warsaw, but instead of a five-line notation, by that point, you only have one line, and you go up and down. And the first pitches of the piece, and a lot of composers later than this will do similar texts, even if it's not 12-tone music. Da -da -da -da, that's four pitches. And then da -da -da -da, that's four more from another uh, trumpet. And then two sets of sustained pitches from the strings, and that's your 12-tone row. And everything else is permutations. He chose a row carefully. Mine was very arbitrary, but a lot of times 12-tone composers will choose very carefully. And he found a row that would also manifest uh, an old uh, Hebrew chant, the uh, Shema Yisrael. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. And the storyline of this piece is uh, the Jewish ghetto in Warsaw, and people are awakened in Reveille, and they're lined up, and those German Nazis, uh, the soldiers, have them count off. I want to know how many people I'm committing to the gas chambers today. And these poor folks, the only defiance they can show is a verbal singing defiance as they march off singing the Shema Yisrael. Typically, this piece is done in whatever vernacular of uh, the people listening, plus uh, some German narration, narration, and then also Hebrew.
I cannot remember everything. I must have been unconscious most of the time. I remember only the grandiose moment when they all started to sing as if prearranged. The old prayer they had neglected for so many years. The forgotten creed. But I have no recollection how I got underground to live in the sewers of Warsaw for so long a time. The day began as usual. Reveille, when it still was dark. Get out, whether you slept or whether worries kept you awake the whole night. You had been separated from your children, from your wife, from your parents. If you don't know what happened to them, how could you sleep? The trumpets again! Get out! The sergeant will be furious! They came out, some very slowly. The old ones, the sick ones, some with nervous agility. They fear the sergeant. They hurry as much as they can. In vain. Much too much noise, much too much commotion, and not fast enough. The Feldwebel shouts, Achtung! Still gestanden! Na jetzt mal! Oder soll ich mit dem Gewehrkolben reinhagen? One, two, three, four, became fast and fast, so fast that it finally sounded like a stampede of wild horses. And all of a sudden, it's begun singing the Schweiz! Sometime during World War I, one of his superior officers said to him, Are you this notorious Schoenberg? And his reply was, No one else wanted to be him, so I had to. He definitely had a sense of destiny, and also a sense of numerology, as we've seen. His thrice seven poems of Albert Giraud, Pierrot and Air, 21, is his opus 21. He invented his 12-tone music practice in 1923. And the first piece in his uh, repertory of that style is Opus 23. And then many years later, someone had the ill manners to point out to him he had been born on September 13th, uh, 1874. Someone had the ill manners to note that when he got to his 7 plus 6 birthday, i.e. 76 years old, 7 plus 6 equals 13. And he felt, if I can just get through this year, I'll be okay. And he died 13 minutes before the end of his 7 plus 6 equals 76 equals 13 year on a Friday the 13th. 